to, to children, both the no, no Place for Home report by the Ombudsman for Children that you referenced and the Home Works report by the Children's Rights Alliance hi highlights the very, very negative impact of emergency accommodation uh, has on children, not just in their present, but in terms of their futures. Um, a 10-year-old girl compared her family hub accommodation to a prison. That was her experience. This leaves children at risk of developing adverse childhood experiences, and this is a, a documented phenomenon. And the research shows that the long-term impacts of homelessness on children's health and well-being, including an increased, or increased likelihood and risk of homelessness in later life. And I just wondered, is your department or any other department doing any long-term assessments of the impact of living in emergency accommodation, in secure housing, uh, on children, both in their present, but also in terms of their long term. So that's one question. Um, and would you consider placing a time limit uh, on the child, uh, on, the, on the time a child spends in emergency accommodation? Um, the first key action in Pillar 1 uh, of Rebuilding Ireland was to ensure that by mid-2017, which was two years ago, commercial hotels and B&Bs would only be used in limited circumstances for emergency accommodation, in recognition that one-night emergency accommodation is inappropriate and unsustainable for long terms, for long periods for children, and particularly de detrimental for children. As of the 1st of June 2019, 80 homeless families were on one-night-only emergency accommodation. Why has the, the, the commitment, Minister, to cease reliance on commercial hotels and B&Bs not been delivered? And what steps are being taken to ensure no families are placed on that chronically unstable and inappropriate provision? And will you, Minister, consider a change to the law so that decision makers must consider what is the best for each child and to ensure uh, that their needs are met when deciding where to accommodate families? Um, and I'm now turning to... Minister, you have uh, five minutes. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Senator, for your questions, and, and you're very welcome to the, to the committee. Um, so just to clarify, there's 1,005 families in emergency accommodation that are headed by a, a single parent. In relation to why people are presenting to emergency accommodation or presenting as homelessness, we did try to do a piece of research to capture this information. Unfortunately, I think from memory, 40% uh, of respondents didn't give a reason. And then we were left with 60% um, from which we were then trying to get a proper understanding of exactly what was going on and why these people were presenting. Um, family breakdown, I, I think, accounted for one of three of, of that 60%. I'm not saying that that was domestic violence. I'm just saying it was family breakdown. We didn't have a further breakdown of family breakdown and, and what that meant. And, and maybe one in three were coming from the private rental sector. And that doesn't necessarily mean evictions, though. Um, we didn't know why. So again, it speaks to the, 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 the kind of the lack of, of detail and the data. But following on from that piece of work that was done then, we are now, and we have commissioned, and it's underway, a much more detailed survey. Uh, and hopefully from that survey, we can get a much better understanding of why people are presenting and then what we can do. And in relation to direct, direct provision, I'm not responsible for direct provision. Um, it's... it's uh, different supports and cares are put in place based on uh, people who are coming into the country and seeking asylum and going into direct provision. It's not something that's done by the local authorities. It's led by the Department of Justice. In relation to the negative impact on, on, on children, I'm, I'm very well aware. I mean, I, and I've said this before in committee, but one of the first things that was brought to my attention was the presentation of children um, who were suffering from motor, uh, motor skill development um, because of the cramped places that they were being brought up in. And I've spoken to people who are working in the hubs and who've been working in, in homelessness for far longer than I have, and their fear of uh, a kind of intergenerational homelessness. Um, so the, 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 the child being more at risk of becoming homeless as an adult, um, and um, that's a very real concern. And I've also spoken to teachers as well about the impact of homelessness and emergency accommodation on children in schools and what impact that is having. Um, I have to say that the, the HOPE programme that we have been rolling out has been the response to the fact that we believe that hotels and BMBs are not an appropriate first response or temporary response for families in emergency. We now have, I think, more than 650 families in family hubs where they get all of the care and support that they need. We know that families in hubs are spending much less time in emergency accommodation than families in hotels. And that probably speaks to the, to the point that in Dublin, uh, the majority of families in emergency will spend less than 12 months there before we get them into a home. 
Uh, it's still too long, but we, it was much longer for families homes. and hotels. Hubs are not homes. That's why they were first response. But I'm not talking about hubs. I'm saying they, 12 months in emergency accommodation, less than that before they go into a home, not a hub. So that includes families in hubs, leaving hubs, and going into homes, which I think is very important. Um, and if you look at the first half of this year, 467 families left emergency accommodation and went into homes. And that's a 45% increase on 2018. So while things are very, very bad and it's a huge challenge, we are increasing the supports that we are giving. We are getting more families out of emergency accommodation uh, and we are getting more, more, more children out of emergency accommodation, which is important. And then to move to the question that you had around Cork. I guess, um, given that, as I understand, the figures of 10,240 and the numbers of children being almost at 4,000, that these are the highest uh, levels of homelessness ever recorded in the state. Am I correct in that um, understanding, Minister? No, no, Senator. It's They're not the highest. Not the highest. No, it has been higher. It has been higher. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you would accept that they are extraordinarily high and have been growing and have been, have been climbing in well, spite of the best efforts of, of, of rebuilding Ireland? Yeah, I mean, when I look at the trends and what's happening in relation to, to, to families and children in emergency accommodation, as I, I pointed out earlier, there are less in emergency accommodation than there was this time last year. We have increased the numbers of exits and preventions for families, so that now for every two families presenting, we find a home for one immediately. But we are still seeing huge levels of presentations as well. They are, they are slightly down in Dublin, but it's still very, very, it's still too high. It's way too high, yeah. and the impact is immeasurable. It isn't just the here and now, and it isn't a simple measure or matter of bringing in regulators to hubs. That might make things better. No, it's, it's, Bring, bringing in regulations to workhouses back in the 1840s would have made life a little bit better for people. But actually what we needed was that those workhouses closed down, that people shouldn't be in emergency accommodation. 80 families are in hotels uh, as of uh, June. Uh, people are in hubs. The damage to children is immeasurable. And I think the scale of the response relative to the scale of the trauma that those children are facing now but into their futures is not properly understood and therefore I would sincerely ask the Minister and his department and other departments to, to understand uh, the impact of this and if you don't have sufficient data to commission that because this shouldn't happen to children today but it should never happen to that size of a group of children ever again in our state and I would really like the Minister to uh, give me a sense that he understands and okay maybe the numbers are going down but the, the numbers are far too high and the damage is far too great and I don't believe the response is adequate to the scale of the trauma that those families are experiencing so I'd like to be reassured Minister by, by your words today. Thank you, Senator. I absolutely understand the damage that's been done to families and children and individuals because of the housing crisis that we have. And I don't need any more data to understand that. I've met families in hotels, in hubs. Thankfully, I've also met families going into their new homes. The scale of this challenge, I mean, it's incredibly significant. Not only did we have not enough homes being built for a number of years, we've also got net immigration because the economy is doing so well, putting even more pressure in relation to the need to ramp up the delivery of new homes. What I, I can tell you is that in terms of the scale of our response, by the end of this year, I think, since the beginning of Rebuilding Ireland, 100,000 households will have been supported because of the work that people have done across the country between local authorities, my department, housing bodies, NGOs, to help people, be that preventing them from becoming homeless at all in the first place, supports like the housing assistance payment, or getting them into social housing homes. And the important thing that we have to do is to drive the delivery of new homes. And that's why when we look at some of the new data that we have, to see that the number of families exiting emergency accommodation into homes is up something like 45% on the same period for last year in that report. That's important. To see that the number of families exiting emergency accommodation into social housing homes is also up on the previous period, more than 50%. That's important too, because what that's telling people is that this is a huge challenge, but there's a huge response underway as well. And we are only increasing the response every year as we build more homes to meet that challenge. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Deputy Barry, you've...